Hello, good evening. Uh, my name is Tiago Ak and I am um, uh, your Sunday painter. And I come here on the first episode of Sunday painting to show you the ancient art of uh, painting outdoors. And um, I'm gonna make an explanation while I paint. And um, you can call me the Portuguese Bob Ross. First of all, uh, the ancient art of uh, plein air painting, it's an uh, old man style of painting when you paint outdoors and only at Sundays. And for that you need a kit like this, that is uh, my Van Gogh um, painting kit that uh, contains all the paint that I need and uh, also here space to put uh, my canvas board. But, um, now I'm not gonna paint here just because of the angle it's, it's easier if I paint on this one. So bear with me. I'm gonna have my kit on the side and I'll explain what I'm doing. This, I'm gonna paint with acrylic and um, we are here in uh, Montargil. Montargil it's in Portugal in the center of Portugal. It's um, a lake. It's kind of the Portuguese Loch Ness Lake you know. Uh, there is monsters here and uh, we just saw lots of uh, uh, ospreys, uh, fishing eagles, it's like the Portuguese bald eagle. Uh, I'm gonna need some water, uh, well conserved in a Victorinox uh, uh, bottle and uh, just some plain water. Um, and I got here some uh, th 300 milligrams watercolor paper um, that is uh, stretched with uh, some masking tape on, uh, on a board. And uh, yeah, that's really gonna. Uh, the masking tape is really important when you're painting on paper so that it doesn't get all wobbly. Uh, I'll explain as I go. I'm just gonna drink a bit of water because it's very important to stay hydrated when you're painting for your concentration levels and uh, your eyes don't dry because um, we are here uh, in the middle of the desert. Um, I got my brush kits, a uh, few different sizes, some really small for details, some like watercolor brushes that work really good here for the, um, for the watercolor paper, it's redundant as a sound, some Chinese brushes from Vietnam, um, and then this, um, this brush is my favorite, it's like this angle cut edgy brush uh, that is for drawing and covering the main parts. So basically, I still didn't, figure, didn't think about how I'm gonna start. Got my palette, uh, and let's pick this through. So I'm gonna start with the rough drawing. I'll probably uh, use just the base color to get some drawing. And it has base color. I'm gonna choose something in between brown and um, and green, or like a dark green will do. So I draw that part here of the trees and the, maybe the shadows on the lake. Yeah, I'll mix some brown and green so I can start sitting the colors on the right places and I st start working out my composition. To paint some uh, those happy trees there, as Bob Ross would say. And uh, for brown I uh, choose this burnt amber. Um, I didn't choose burnt sienna because it has a more um, it has a more reddish tint. Although burnt sienna is a very important color, uh, burnt amber it's not red. It's like almost pure brown. And I'm gonna get that brush that I showed you. I don't know how it's called. But it's this this clean cut drawing brush. Also, I got a rag to clean my brush with excess paint and excess water. And, um, yeah, here we go. So I'm dip my my brush on the water. I'm gonna mix these two colors: the green, dark green, sap green, I believe, and the uh, burnt umber. And I should actually dilute them with some white, so it doesn't get too. Uh, so I don't uh, go wrong on the value straight away. Because nothing is as dark as these colors in there except the, the really dark parts of the trunks, the tree trunks, the happy tree trunks. 
and I want also to get the part of the scenery behind already defined so then I can work on the water which is going to be the main part of this painting I believe um, let's see what happens so I mix some white with the burnt umber and the green so I can already get that uh, more foggy area behind there that is Mont Argil. I don't know if you can see from there so in my selection I'm gonna go the horizontal line more or less two thirds above here I can already tell, this is very important, when we are painting we can only know the real um, um, the real value of the color, value meaning the, um, the scale from black to white, from, from dark to bright each color can be of different values, for example I have a green, if I put more black it gets darker, if I put more white it gets uh, lighter and the values, I can mix here, it looks pretty bright and then uh, and then I go there and, and it doesn't look bright at all, it looks really dark, uh, it happens all the time, so we have to test and uh, figure out along the way uh, what's uh, putting the color on the surface, on the canvas, or in this case on the paper. There yeah, we got those foggy mountains of Montargil, actually good because they are brighter, they are darker towards uh, the lake. I should put some blue on it because the blue it's good to throw the things back far away although yeah the shadows more far away they get a bit more of a bluish tint I use ultramarine blue these are just acrylic it's my, my, my acrylic kit it's cheap acrylic it's, it's um, honestly the better quality I buy, uh, you buy the better results you get I just got this because they were really small and I was um, and I was like making a fast kit to travel and I didn't have much money because I was going to Vietnam and uh, I bought this kit and I still have some left so I'm gonna use the paint I have until until it ends because what matters is how we mix the color of course the quality of the pigment will have an impact of it but um, it's actually quite challenging to make uh, some stuff with some cheaper materials Especially if you are a beginner, I totally advise you to don't get too fancy, like just go for it. And also, the more fancy the materials we have, the more uh, we are like uh, seeing this painting as a sacred thing. And I really learned this by my own experience and also in, in university, the teachers always used to tell them to don't see our paintings as too sacred, because otherwise a true experimentation and getting loose on it will never happen. because. Um, if we are we are precious about it, you know, and we cannot have this relationship with our paintings. It is like my precious. Then we won't set ourselves free. So, I, as you can see, like I put some some blue in there. It's mixing well with the green. I'm using the brush stroke, the brush um, bristles too to make already those little um, shapes of trees that you can see just like slightly darker or slightly lighter and I use this along like if my brush is like painting one color I, I'm gonna use it and uh, explore more that color that is according to what I see in the image just like paint as you go, color the bits can you see there the eagle? I don't know if it's, if it's on the camera. It's the Portuguese bald eagle. Okay, now I'm gonna need some ochre. So I can uh, draw the beach and I have the sun is starting. This is the funny thing of painting outdoors is that the light is always changing. Monet used to say every seven minutes the light is totally different. So what's happening is that I can already see some difference from when I started and it's not even seven minutes gone. So um, so you can tell that this is like a quick run trying to grasp reality. And that's actually one of the things that pleases me the most on plein air painting. Is that I'm like racing against time, trying to capture light, hitting objects, 
and making different shapes and different forms. And um, and that light is um, is changing and it's like grasping the moment, you know, it's, it's this this relationship that you have with reality that you are trying to capture the moment and eternalize it forever on a piece of paper or a canvas and uh, I think that's really magic about painting um, and uh, it's one of the things that fascinates me painting reality is exactly because of that okay now I'm mixed a bit of umber uh, of um, okra as you said I, uh, as I said I made that part and now I can I'm gonna start to doing here this these trees and bushes like as this dark green so instead of doing those bushes that I wanted initially I go here to the tree this happy little tree as our good friend Bob Ross would say and the happy little tree needs some dark spots here in the shadow and some bright spot there and now that I got this color I'm gonna search where there is more places that need this color so actually here actually we need a bit more burnt umber uh, okay, now I'm making actually a mistake because I should paint the sky before, otherwise the, the work I'm gonna do of the tree, it's an, uh, I'm gonna have a hard time in the end. Why? Because the sky is blue and the tree is brown and it's gonna contaminate each other. So if I don't work the sky now, I'm gonna have a harder time going around the tree later and uh, catching the, the, the correct color of it or the correct value because sometimes the colors don't get on point and we need to prioritize value even if we don't get the correct color because uh, the value is what makes things look what like they look because of the because of the the difference between of light and darkness okay so now I got this blue I use this the sienna blue the sienna blue now the primary blue yeah it's the cyan blue not the sienna sienna is another part sorry i'm dyslexic so i confuse a lot of words bear with me uh, it's my tolerance i got the certification for my dyslexia so i can uh, make uh, spelling mistakes and all that uh, everyone tolerates me even in university they gave me tolerance two weeks later for my essence so yeah, here is a bit too dark but uh, and too bright, so I'm gonna grab a bit of more this dark blue the, that we saw before, how we call it, the ultramarine blue. So I mix a bit more of the ultramarine blue, so it has a bit of a more reddish hue, and this reddish, it actually looks more like the color. Can you see the... Um, how do you call it? The stalk. There's a stalk passing by. And if you hear some rowing on the background, it's um, it's not only the boats that are here, because there's lots of boats and jet skis. It's also the um, Loch Ness Monster of Portugal. Uh, he actually lives in this uh, area. And, um, and I have too much paint on my brush. I'm cleaning it on the lake, because the lake it has the same color of the sky. Okay, now I'm not happy with this color because it's too, it's too dark. The value is not correct of the sky, but I'm gonna do it anyways. And then add white on the top. You're gonna see my trick that I have. So, because also it's really hot here and the paint is drying really fast. And I need to kind of speed up the painting. So it's a good excuse to just drop this color here as my brush is full with it. And, uh, and as I'm dropping all the, the excess pigments here, I'm going to compensate very soon and very quick with some white. White, I like to use the titanium white. Titanium white is... is better than zinc white. Also I heard it's less toxic. It has oxide of titanium and um, oxide of zinc is really toxic. And um, Zinc uh, white has more transparency which I don't think is that good uh, when we are trying to obtain colors. Um, 
titanium white is, is bright and it's opaque. Oh, yeah, just a little over there. The jacket, yeah, you see? Sometimes I can correct with my finger if the under layer is, is already wet, is already dry. And the titanium white is bright, it's shiny, it's strong, it's all what we need for painting. Now I grab this brush. And I'm gonna use the brush to make the little cuts of the trees on the mountains over Montargil there. So yeah, this type of painting was really established by the Impressionists, although before there were still people that painted outside. Um, but um, technology in painting really got um, got changed on the um, when the, the impressionist area was uh, was like in the late 1800s. Um, Technol uh, like paint was uh, was uh, manageable to be uh, transported and to be in tubes and to go outside and the oil paints were stabilized because before they needed a whole workshop a whole atelier. To, to keep a painting practice to make some decent work and um, when the impressionists um, they, they were um, fascinated with painting light what the hell was that? I don't know if that was a fish jumping or Loch Ness monster but um, there was some activity here going on okay there I'm still not happy it's too bright I need to darken it with the red I mean with the a reddish blue, the reddish blue is the ultramarine blue and I make also always the brighter part of the sky uh, the, the top part of the sky brighter because that's how it looks always towards, in towards the land the sky is, uh, is brighter, it's almost white I think it's because of the reflection of light on the land Ah, very important. I got this. This is actually very practical for the paint not to dry that fast on, on the um, on the palette. It was already drying and thank God I got this. Because um, it saves you. Sometimes you take a bit of time to make the color correct and, uh, and then uh, it ends up drying and this it's a shame. Add white here on the horizontal line. on the brush and I need to add more white. White is definitely the color that we use the most. It is um, it's a very useful color because um, then things can be more nuanced when we use uh, slightly brighter tones of them and every color needs to be mixed. It's hard to paint something that looking uh, a bit like reality, straight from the cube. And animals around me. Go. 
Can use the horizontal line of the water, there is also a brighter part. I'm gonna compensate here because my loose brush stroke wasn't so precise. It's like almost as it was a, br a bright line over there. It's good to paint loose brush strokes uh, if they are directional in the and if you go along with the, the textures of what you are seeing, uh, the loose brush strokes can help you, like a uh, clay figuration, uh, can help you show how um, how things. Um, what am, what am I say? I'm not explaining well. What? Oh my God! Did you see that? The eagle. I don't know if it caught a fish, but it was almost. No, we are so lucky to get this on the camera. It's beautiful. It's a por Portuguese bald eagle, fishing eagle. The fish is around here. I didn't know they exist in this area, honestly, I'm fascinated. And there were like nine before uh, flying around here. And uh, one caught something and the others were like trying to steal the fish. You see how, how solidary they are? Like instead of, of going and, and fishing the nine of them, the one catches the fish and the other find easier to steal the fish from the other than to go fishing themselves. Sneaky, sneaky animal. Okay, I'm trying to use different, slightly different terms of more bright and more blue color in the palette to make a bit of texture. I just saw something on water there. It is the Loch Ness monster is appearing. Look, there's three eagles right there. At least one is on the camera. Okay, so now I'm gonna make this uh, mixed with ochre white and a bit of green. And make these bushes here with the water. Yeah, I got exactly the color. Let's see if it's correct. At least the valve is correct. The tone is very close to reality, definitely. Like this olive green. And uh, I'm gonna do all the area first. Slight variations of tone. I'm, I'm gonna need a bit of yellow for there because I'm seeing some. I'm gonna use lemon yellow. There is cadmium yellow and lemon yellow. Lemon yellow is more bright than cadmium. It has a slight more greenish tone. Cadmium is more uh, it's more pulling towards orange, just like this one. And I'm gonna add this little bit of yellow. Ah, I got to green now. Let's see if I add white. Yeah, it's okay. Oh, there is another thing on the water here. Yeah, there is a lot of activity. That's the cool thing of painting in nature. It's like we are sitting outside and, and nature in silence, although I speak a lot. And uh, nature starts revealing itself. It starts appearing stuff and coming out. And we have animals making their activities. And uh, now I'm just painting like filling in everything to don't you don't leave uh, any white outside, uh, under. I'm painting the happy little tree. Going to my drawing brush. I should actually see I didn't finish the background there and now I'm having a problem here because it's not, it's hard to catch the exact same color. It needs blue, it needs more white. So it's good to do one layer of the background and then do the overlapping layer after. Because it's hard to get, once to get the same color. And also when colors dry, 
the drawing slight different tone, slightly different, uh, more darker. I believe. Let me try to do that. I don't know. Maybe I'm saying some bullshit. But when they dry, they are slightly different. Wet paint looks uh, slightly different than dry paint. I'll figure out in a bit. Now I'm concentrated on this part, so I can't really, can't really think that much. But when we are painting, I feel a few things. We are just trying to connect intuitively to it, uh, I mean perceptually. There is like a perceptual dance. Your eyes like looking to the painting. Oh. Looking to the painting and then looking to the to what you're painting, uh, to the reality. Looking to reality, looking to the painting, and this back and forth, what informs your painting. And there's a moment the painting itself needs to get some autonomy, but that moment is being built up through this back and forth of perceptual observation. Okay, I like this one. Maybe and it's okay. Oh, huh? This is a dark hole. And I make the cutting edge there. From the separation of water. To the plant. To the shadow. And the sun is over there. The sun is somewhere over here. You can see it on the camera the way. Yeah, I couldn't you. I was telling you the impressionists, they are the ones that, that stabilized this practice of painting outdoors. And uh, I think it's quite fun, honestly. Although it's a bit seen as an old man Sunday painter practice. Because um, it's this very traditionalist uh, mode operating that is like going to the night and connecting to the night you see everything is connected I'm here trying to grasp everything with paint man but I love it and they developed the technique of impasto that was like painting fast with uh, big uh, scribbles of paint all in one which is very different than the old masters techniques that they developed to paint in studio where they did washes of color very transparent or on the top of on the top of um, the layers to get it really realistic you know like Caravaggio these chiaroscuro techniques which are amazing but they are not at all the same principles as, uh, as this uh, Sunday painting outdoor plain air Bob Ross style. All the Bob Ross painted in the studio. So this tree, you know, we think trees are green, but I actually see it brown. And uh, well, did you see that man? There is lots of little monsters coming up, lurking on the surface of the water. And we need to, to paint what we see and not what we think, how we think the things are. Because our mind is always poisoned by ideas. I mean poisoned. There is, it's the way the mind works. It's not nothing bad. It is how it is. Of uh, ideas, how a tree looks like. And, um, and sometimes the trees don't look like uh, we think they are. They, they are beings of themselves. And, they don't fit this category of a green thing with a brown trunk. We need to observe and uh, let nature talk to itself by itself. And on this observation we can maybe grasp something of reality. I'm gonna need some black. I actually normally don't use black, I mix brown and blue and a bit of red sometimes uh, to get the three trunks because I'm not getting a bright enough color but I guess I should actually okay so I just found out I just found out that uh, it wasn't filmed until the end I don't know why I think uh, the camera I'll blame it on the camera it's not me it's the camera man 
but <laughs> it's the first time I'm doing it, so bear with me. Uh, it's finished. Um, I hope you enjoyed it and uh, I explained my process. This is not the way to paint, this is the way I paint. I'm Tiago Ac, the Portuguese Bob Ross, and this is Sunday painting. I'm making old man's painting traditions by young people like me, young painters keeping old traditions alive. And this painting will be for sale on my Etsy store or you can buy it also on Instagram and Facebook, just DM me and, um, and I'll let you know how it works and I hope you like it, it's a beautiful place, there is a lot of um, activity underwater happening, fishes jumping, eagles fishing, another fish just jumped, Loch Ness monsters around and uh, I hope you like it, see you next Sunday.